So I've been enjoying running tests with Cascadeur to see how it will fit into my production pipeline. And if you don't know what Cascadeur is, to put it into basics, it's a piece of software that performs AI-assisted keyframing to make animating characters super easy and incredibly fast. Now, while I was using this software, I came across a neat little way they have for snapping around characters, you know, to view them from different angles. And I thought, you know what? I want this in Unity. So I stole it and figured I might as well share it with the community of this channel. So how does this tool work? Well, you hold down the control and alt keys and you swipe with the mouse in a direction and the scene view will snap to the nearest axis. And if you happen to be on one of the axis, well, then it will snap to the next in the direction of the swipe. Simple and effective as you can see. So let me show you how to recreate this in Unity. But before I do, if you're interested in a longer form video of me evaluating Cascadeur for an upcoming project, then let me know in the comments. And I have good news for you. If you're thinking about pulling the trigger on a license of their software, the kind folks there have offered a hefty discount and you can find the affiliate link and promo code in the description of this video if you're interested. Anyway, make sure you're subscribed for a bigger video on Cascadeur in the future, but for now, let's look at recreating this tool. So I've already got a class under my editor called SceneView Snap Tool, and if I open up in Visual Studio, as you can see, it's just a basic class. It doesn't derive from MonoBehavior or Editor or Editor Window or anything like that. I'm gonna show you how to use a basic class and run it as a tool in Unity. So how do we do that? Well, we need to add an attribute to this called initialize on load. And what that does is it says, okay, Unity, you've loaded, run the static constructor of this class and do whatever it says to do. And what we want it to do is we want it to subscribe to when the scene view does an on GUI call. And you can do that by using the during scene GUI callback. And we'll just create a function that we'll call on scene view during scene GUI. There we are. And in here, we'll put in scene view. Great. So now this is going to get called whenever the GUI calls its on GUI. And we want to get the current event. Now, the current event is mouse, key, whatever the user is pressing. So we want to say, OK, if it's null or if it's not a mouse press, then we're not interested. So we'll return there. So what that's doing is it's saying, OK, if you're not a mouse and you're not actually an event, get rid of it. Go about your business. Don't do what we're going to do here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to check that the right keys are being pressed for what we want. And we're actually going to be using the Alt and Shift buttons, which are different from the Cascadeur ones, but Control was already assigned. You can assign different buttons if you so wish. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, we want to make sure that the left button, the zero button is pressed and that the event type is actually of type mouse drag because we want to be getting whether we're doing swipes or not. OK, so we're in. Let's actually start looking at the math. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get where what the closest axis is to where we are. And the way we do that is we come in and we say, OK, give me the scene view that's actually been passed into this function and tell me what the rotation is. So that's the camera rotation of the scene view. Now we're going to want to round that to the nearest axis. And we do that by using mathf.round, take in what we want, in this case the x, and we're going to divide that by 90 and we're going to multiply it by 90. So basically getting the closest. And we'll be doing that for the x, the y, and the z, or for my English friends, z. There we go. OK, so now we've got our nearest axis that we're actually interested in. We want to see if we're already on it. If we've already performed our swipe and we haven't moved the camera anymore, then we're going to be on that axis and we're going to be wanting to move to the next one. And we're going to want to do a 90 degree turn on that particular axis. So we'll come into here and we'll say, OK, give me the rotation and give me the rounding that we just did. Excellent. And then 
check if they're zero. So what's happening here? Is it saying, give me the angle between these two, between the current rotation and its nearest axis. And if it's zero, if it's approximately zero, then great, we'll perform an action to move to the next axis. Otherwise, we're going to want to jump to the nearest axis. So sort of the start, the first swipe that we perform. And to do that, we just steal this particular code here, which is our rounded angle, and then we go. Excellent. That sets the scene view rotation, the camera rotation to that rounded angle. So now we're in to where we're going to jump to the next one. And what we do here is we want to know what is greater in our particular swipe. Is it the X or is it the Y? So we'll come in and we'll say, okay, give me the absolute delta of the X and the absolute delta of the Y. And the reason we're using the absolute here is because you might have a larger swipe in a negative Y direction than you do a smaller swipe in a positive X direction. And that means you still wanna go vertical. So you wanna check the absolute of both of those. Okay, so the next thing to do is to set the scene view rotation to the next one along. So we'll go, okay, here we're saying horizontal. So scene view dot rotation. And we're going to set that angle. Oh, I want a multiply there and zero F. And here we're going to check whether, now we're gonna check whether we're positive or negative. So are we less than zero? Great, then we'll go a negative 90 degree rotation. Otherwise we'll go a positive 90 degree rotation. And then we just set the Z there. Now we're gonna copy and paste that here, but we're going to do it for the Y. And obviously as we're gonna be doing it for the Y, we're going to need to switch these around a bit. There we go. Okay, so that says, okay, we're doing a horizontal movement. So we're going to be turning around the Y axis or we're doing a, a vertical movement. So we're gonna be rotating around the X axis. Now that's great and all, but what happens if we just left this code as it was? Well, you'll notice that if I'm facing my character and I was to swipe upwards, then the character would then, the scene view would then look at the character from the top, looking down the Y axis. And if I did another vertical swipe upwards, I'd then be looking at the character's back but I would have rotated around 90 degrees and my camera would be upside down. My camera's ve vector up would actually be the negative Y. And we don't want that. We want to have our Y flip around. So we always want to have the Y of our camera facing upwards because it's just easier to work that way. So what we'll do is we'll want to check whether we're actually got our angle, that we, the vector that we're currently up, whether it is actually up. So here we just basically go, okay, give me the X or the Z and tell me if they're zero. If they're not zero, because if they're not zero, we're not got her up and we want to turn. And to do that, we'll, oh, if I can spell it correctly, there we go. Forward, we'll take the rotation that we're currently at because we've already changed our rotation. And we'll say, okay, give me that multiplied by a vector free forward. Okay, and then we want to reset our vector rotation to have it looking with Y being up. So forward, and then the important bit, set the vector to up. So we're gonna look and we're gonna look being up. Excellent, that's done. So that's our math done for the turning. But the eagle eyed people out there might notice that this is going to be happening all the time I'm dragging. So as I'm dragging my mouse along, this will continuously be called. And if it's continuously called, then I'm gonna keep flipping around the actual character in one movement. And I don't want that. I want every single swipe action to have one single snap action. So we'll want to put in a flag 
static ball m snap formed equals false and i want to say okay is this snap performed false and if it is then we're going to use our snap there we go set that to true and down here we'll also want to check if m snap performed is true then m snap performed equals false and we're going to want to else that there we go there we are okay so what's this doing is it saying okay we've performed we've started our drag our swipe and we're going to set it to say we've done it we've performed our snap don't do it anymore and as soon as we let go of the button the mouse the keys or whatever then reset if we need to the snap perform flag so that our next swipe we do it again now the only last thing we need to do is we need to tell unity okay we've used this we've used this event to perform an action in our tool don't use it for anything else and to do that we come down here and we say e.use use the current event in our tool don't use it for anything else excellent let's save that and go back into unity Okay, so we're back in Unity and I have my character here and he's a nice little military character. I'll leave a link in the description to the asset store where you can pick him up. Let's perform our action. I hold down my shift, I hold down my alt and I perform a swipe. And there you go. It snapped to face down the Z because that was the closest access I actually had to where I was. You can see it again. I'll move him slightly. Swipe, snapped. Now I'm at this particular axis if I was to pull another horizontal swipe, there we go. He's actually turned around, so he's facing towards the left of me. Now, what I'm doing here, and this is the direction I've chosen to go, is to have it where when I drag the character, I'm dragging. The swipe actually drags the character around. Some people prefer the inverse. For me, I prefer it to seem like I'm dragging the character around. Now, with the verticals, you can actually Go up and down. So let me show you. I'm facing my character. I pull down and I face the top of the character. I pull down again and I'm facing the back of the character. But this is where that important step is that I told you about keeping the vector up. Even though I'm facing the back of the character, I've chosen to keep that vector up and not just continuously flow around the character itself. But now I'm at the back. How do I go below? Well, now I swipe up and now I'm at the feet. I swipe up again and I'm at the front. And again, it's done that turn. It's done to make sure that the vector is always up. And that's basically the tool. It's a quick little swipe tool that enables you to swipe around your character if you wanted to go around them or up and down. And it's an easy way to get around and manipulate your character, whether you're animating it or whether you're modeling it. That's it. A quick and dirty little stolen tool that I thought might be useful for someone out there. Let me know in the comments if you use it and if you think it will become useful in the future. And if you are after a different tool, then the video on screen now might be just what you are looking for.